Hello there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explained. There's some very clever people have taken Windows 10 built for ARM and they've taken the Raspberry Pi and they've made the glue in the middle that can make the two work together that brings you a full Windows 10 desktop on a Raspberry Pi. Now I've spent a few days playing with it, trying to get it to work and I'd like to share with you my experiences of what I have found out. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Now, as I've said many times on this channel, ARM-based processors are not just for smartphones. We find them in a whole range of different uh, equipment, including now in servers, and I highly recommend you go and look at my uh, Amazon Graviton video, because that shows how you can run AWS instances on an ARM-based processor on Amazon's cloud services. And of course, another popular place where we find ARM processors is in the Raspberry Pi. Now, the Raspberry Pi has a quad-core Cortex-A53 processor and one gigabytes of memory. Also, Windows is no longer just for x86 because you can now also get it for ARM-based processors, specifically for Qualcomm Snapdragon processors, the 835, the 850, and the 855, where we have this range now of always-on, always-connected uh, laptops which actually run full Windows but now using an ARM-based processor. Now, some very clever people on the internet have taken the uh, ARM build of Windows and they've taken the Raspberry Pi and they've built all the bits that you need to make the two work together. And I will leave some credits here for them because they've done an absolutely amazing job. So when I heard about this, of course, I wanted to try it for myself and this is what I found out. Now, the first step, of course, is installation. Now, really, this is a multi-step uh, thing. It's not just a case of download the file and it's all done. First of all, you need to download the Raspberry uh, Pi installer, and I'll leave a link to that in the description below. On that web page, they also tell you where you get hold of a copy of the uh, kind of the DVD image, the ISO file for Windows 10 for ARM. Then you have to kind of get some core files, which they've kind of created, which have got some various drivers and things in it. And you bring all three of them together following the instructions and you can then write an SD card, which you put in your Raspberry Pi and you boot it up. And probably when you boot it up, you're gonna get a blue screen of death because getting the right combination of the installer, the Windows 10 for ARM build, and the core files that actually all work together can be quite tricky. Now I had to try this several times, different builds, different packages, different uh, versions of the installer. I also tried it on different models of the Raspberry Pi, but I finally, after two days, actually managed to get a version that boots up. So first of all, kudos to all the people that have got this to work. Uh, they have done a really, really interesting job. But unfortunately, it's terribly slow. Now, why is that? Well, if you just think about it, the Raspberry Pi's got one gigabyte of memory and it's got a quad-core Cortex-A53 running at maybe 1.4 gigahertz. Even a reasonable mid-range smartphone will have an octa-core processor with some of the high-end cores being Cortex-A73 or Cortex-A75 and it'll be running at two gigahertz or even more. And of course, it'll have four gigs of memory, maybe eight gigs of memory. So really, the difference in a Raspberry Pi and even a mid-range smartphone or a high-end smartphone is, is enormous. So the Raspberry Pi really is a low-end piece of hardware when it comes to ARM processors, and that is reflected in the desktop performance. In fact, it's so slow that if you click on something like the Edge web browser, you can wait maybe two minutes for it actually to appear with just the initial kind of uh, startup page. It's also worth wondering why is it so slow? And as I've mentioned, of course, the processor, the Cortex A53 is a very slow processor. And also when I looked at kind of the performance monitor inside of Windows 10, it shows that the SD card was being used at 100% basically most of the time. So even just clicking on, let's say, the Edge uh, web browser brought up 100% usage. Now I was using an SD card of the A2 class, so it's a fairly fast SD card, but clearly the IO paths there on the Raspberry Pi are not able to cope with that high demand of uh, disk usage. Now again, on these other uh, laptops that you get with a Snapdragon processing, they have been designed specifically with more IO capabilities in mind, greater bandwidth to the memory and so on, so they don't suffer so much from this problem. And of course, probably using proper SSD hard disk or other uh, flash memory subsystems, not just the SD card, which clearly is limited. However, if you can bear all of the kind of slowness of it, it is a really interesting experiment to kind of, you know, play around with the different tools that you've got already built in, like the Edge web browser, 
actually kind of going to the Microsoft Store and trying to install different bits of software and generally just playing around with the concept of Windows 10 on ARM. But of course you must never use this actually as an advertisement for running Windows 10 on ARM because it really is painfully slow and it will make people think that actually if this is what it means to run it on ARM, I'm not gonna bother. Actually on a properly tuned laptop with the right resources, the experience is much, much different. This is a very low end device here and really they are shoehorning in Windows 10 onto this device. Another problem is it's not very stable. I actually never managed to fully download a program from Microsoft Store because even during the download, which may, you know, may have taken a few minutes, somehow it would crash and I'd get a blue screen of death and it would restart. So it's interesting from a preview technology point of view, it's interesting from a possibility point of view, but actually as an actual demonstration of running Windows 10 on ARM, don't show it to anybody because they, you know, they're gonna get like pretty depressed about what it means. So there are all the negatives, but what about the positives? There are some very positive sides about this. First of all, it just shows you that the build that Microsoft have created for Windows 10 is generic enough that it can go on other hardware. At the moment, they've been working very, very close with Qualcomm, so there's been investments in terms of time and money for Qualcomm and Microsoft to work together to bring us these always on, always connected PCs running Windows 10, and that's great. But it does show us kind of a glimpse that in the future, it might not just be limited to these particular laptops that you can get with Qualcomm Snapdragon processing. Maybe there's gonna be other types of devices from other types of manufacturers, maybe even, you know, the Raspberry Pi 4, whatever that turns out to be, with kind of, you know, beefier CPU, larger amounts of memory. Maybe we're gonna to start to see Windows on ARM moving further afield than just these laptops from Microsoft and Qualcomm together. So the potential here is amazing that actually Microsoft has done a good job building this for ARM in a way that it can work on other bits of hardware. And the other positive about this, of course, is that there are people on the internet, very clever people, who are investing their time in actually making Windows 10 for ARM work on other devices, which means there's the interest. And where there is the interest, that means that there's going to be a momentum to actually bring this to more laptops, to more platforms, and we're gonna see the market share of ARM processors running Windows 10 increase. Of course, when you're increasing from very, very small amounts, anything is upwards, but there, it shows there is the potential and there is the need and there is the desire to bring this to more platforms. So I see those two things are very, very encouraging that the future of ARM processors and the future of Windows 10 on ARM processors is uh, looking bright. Okay, my name is Gary Sims, this is Gary Explains. I really hope you liked this quick look at Windows 10 on the Raspberry Pi. Any links you want to try out yourself, you'll find them here in the description below. And well, that's about it. I'll see you in the next one.